In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Tuesday, coming up, is the Feast of All Saints in the Western Church. And like so many things in our faith life, what we understand upon hearing the word saints has little to do with what our scriptures actually meant by it. Usually our understanding of saints is way too big or way too small. We make saints too big when we think that only those people like St. Paul or St. Gregory the Illuminator, these untouchable, mystical, mythical people who endured torture for their faith, those are too big. How can I, who can't even endure five minutes of poor customer service on the phone, compare with this type of saint? And if that image of a saint is too big, the other association we have is a little too small. We often call someone a saint who is long-suffering in putting up with abuse. She is a saint for putting up with him all these years. But who wants to be this type of saint? Who endures a hard life with stoic patience? And didn't Jesus promise us an abundant life, an everlasting joy? So it's understandable that not many people are looking to be saints these days if it requires the quick, heroic death of martyrdom or the slow, stoic death of resignation. Well, thankfully, the original use of the term saints, particularly by Paul, has nothing to do really with either of these concepts. When Paul said saint, he meant it to indicate all of the faithful people gathering before God and to follow God. And the original Feast of All Saints Day in the Armenian Church which we celebrate a few weeks later. I've told you this before. It's called Don Amen Sur Peru Hin Yev Nor Tzanot Yev An Tzanot, which means the Feast of All Saints, old and new, known and unknown. It's a great name. And it means that in our oldest biblical and church tradition, saints aren't just the ancient famous few, and they aren't buried only in the past. The saints are the unknown many from recent times and even now who are earnestly attempting to follow Jesus today much more like you and me. And so as Saints Day, All Saints Day approaches, a couple questions come before us from our scriptures in our church. If we are all potentially saints, what does that mean? If it doesn't mean heroic glory or unhappy perfection, then what should we do? How should we live? Well, the first thing we should do is realize that the great saints were more like us than we make them out to be. That the great Saint Peter denied Christ three times and many more after his death. That Saint Gregory the Illuminator's family murdered the king of Armenia. That even Jesus lost his temper and despaired at his coming death. The more you actually explore the scriptures and our faith and our church, the less distant and perfect the saints become, and the more they start looking like us. Yet, something within them led these people to do great things for the gospel, to live and sometimes die with incredible courage and boldness. How did they do that? And if we're all saints, then we're called to live as though our lives will still be important 2,000 years from now. How can we live so that our legacy strengthens the generations of faith that will come in this church after us? Well, I think that the saints, what the saints all had, is an unshakable commitment and a profound calling to witness to Jesus by their lives. Now, this witness is not something complicated. A witness simply establishes the truth by giving evidence. When we celebrate all saints, we celebrate those who gave evidence of who God is. They made God believable and tangible by how they lived. Not how they spoke. Not if they looked holy. Not what language they spoke. 
but how they lived. Of course, following Jesus, who most perfectly made God tangible and real and manifest by his life and his death. Also note that you don't need anything to be a saint. It's truly an equal opportunity calling. And frankly, it's a title that sometimes is given opposite to the achievements of the world. Jesus' beatitudes, his blessings, they are like an award ceremony that the, the world has never seen before. He says, blessed are you when you're poor. He says, blessed are you if you're hungry and who weep and who are excluded and reviled and persecuted. Jesus doesn't want this. Jesus is simply pronouncing a special blessing on the low of the world to reaffirm that saintliness has nothing to do with your abilities and everything to do with what God can do through you. And for this reason, he's worked through the poor more than the rich, the broken more than the strong, the unknown more than the known. Now most of this hearing this gospel today are not literally poor and hungry, thank God. But those of us who are blessed with economic wealth, we're often desperately poverty-stricken in other ways. We're starving for meaning in our lives. We weep silent tears often of loneliness or depression. We hunger for community often without realizing it. We thirst for our own lost integrity and hope in a world which has tons of greed and cynicism. But if we never admit our poverty and pain, we never find the blessing that Jesus offers us. The saints, however, did do this in an extraordinary way. When they come to the end of their own power, they come to trust in the power of Jesus. They aren't these spiritual athletes accruing ever-escalating number of holiness points like we think of them. They simply know their own neediness and the desperate need of the world, and at that intersection, God does his greatest works. And so, in this season of all saints, let's turn our focus from the famous few saints of our past onto the many imperfect saints of the present. Those of us here who wish to join Jesus in his project of lifting up all that is low. For this truly is what a saint is. Not glory, not perfection, not even any particular holiness, just having the courage to say yes to his love, a love that reaches down to bless all that is humble and low and rise it up in his glory. So do you want to know if you're a saint? Try to find our Lord Jesus Christ in the broken places of our world and in your own heart. Find him, trust him, and hear his words that blessed are those. You are blessed. And share that with everyone you know, live it, and you too will be celebrated. You too will be celebrated in the Feast of All Saints, old and new, known and unknown, now and always, and unto the ages of ages.